And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock God, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. And welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hookup, right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here. Rock God, Rick Maxa is here, too. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup here, right next to the San Diego Landings in Point Loma. Wayne Cotto from CCA, our guardian angel, watching over for us to be able to keep access and do all kinds of good things to keep us fishing. No doubt, man. I always learn so much every time Wayne's come on. It's a great refresher for all the things that are happening because this guy is on everything. Yeah. Anything that's going on in our world, Wayne is up to speed on. And we're having a great show. So much good information. And if you've got questions, what a day for it, man. Give us a call here in the second hour. The way you reach us on Let's Talk Hookup is calling us at 213 432 1090 or you can send your questions in via text and that's only available through the let's talk hookup app you should totally download the let's talk hookup app it's free all the archive shows easy to listen to and your only way to text your questions in to wayne also make sure that you include your contact information when you send a text because you might be the lucky winner at the end of the show today we're giving away a pay, giving away a pair of costa del mar sunglasses it's How even better that, than just huh? that you're getting a 300 dollars gift card to costa that you can spend however you see fit you can buy an inexpensive pair of Costas and have a bunch of money left over for gear like their great tech shirts their coolers Backpacks, all the all yeah. the accessories that they have to go along with the glasses or you can buy a killer badass pair for 300 bucks whatever you want yeah. you got 300 bucks coming from Costa and an awesome awesome prize yeah we're so proud to be sponsored by Costa and uh they'll be back for 2023 that's too. awesome that's great news so hey, speaking of 2023 the 2023 CCA sport fishing calendar is being printed right now and will be in stores next week this year's calendar includes fantastic fishing photos all the important dates the best daily chide charts uh tips and techniques fishing regulations you can pick up your calendar at tackle stores landings and all Turner's Outdoorsman store locations or you can order your calendar online at surffishtackle.com and good luck to Bill Varney he's getting on the American Angler this morning Woo, he's over right, there Bill. probably checking in with Lori right now <laughs> and he's jumping on I think it's an eight day trip on the American Angler and he's excited oh yeah. he's excited as he yeah, should he's, be he's ready to go because yeah what a great boat I mean it's like trying to get spots on, on the American Angler Good luck. Mm -hmm. Call Lori. Yeah. Get on the list. Get on the exactly. list. Yeah, get on the get list because it is popular. It's because it's for a reason. It's a great, great operation. But there are spots available. Lori always just says, tell people to call me and get on yeah. the list because I know. She'll make it happen. Come up, she, she has somehow will get, get you in. So if you're trying to get on the American Angler in 2023, best thing to do is just call Lori in the office and get. she'll make magic happen for you. And get I always say, boat. too, man, leave a leave a nice floating deposit like yeah it's amazing how much money you money know talks. yes it does sir <laughs> yes it does <laughs> hey i really want to go on a trip here's my 500 hundred dollar deposit if anything comes available i want it yeah it's amazing how well that works oh yeah for sure hey i wanted i mentioned it yesterday our brand new uh Let's Talk Hookup AFCO Boat Bags. Yeah. Um, and it's on our website, on our shop page, letstalkhookup.com. They're going like hotcakes. Great. And I did a very limited number, so <laughs> if you want one, you better jump on it because I was like, woo. Well, I would They're, think... People, it's, it's a great deal. I would think so. It's a really nice bag. I mean, we, we sell that bag for 60 bucks. Right. You know, it's a really nice AFCO well-made killer bag. The Let's Talk Hookup store has the killer Let's Talk Hookup embroidery. Looks even better. And the lesser expensive. Yeah, forty four twenty five <laughs> yeah. right now while it's deal. on sale. Yeah. While available, while they're on sale. So get one. Go to let's talk hookup .com, go to the shop page and grab one while they're available. Definitely not too early to be thinking about holiday gifts either too. Oh, Christmas right around the corner gifts. and a rad one because it, it's a real multi use bag it too. Is. Whether you use it strictly as your tackle bag, there's lots of space. It fits, you know, Plano boxes, it fits Gamakatsu G boxes, you know, very, very well, but also room to throw your sweatshirt 
t-shirt in there, whether it's just a general catch-all for the boat. I mean, it's right. it's called the boat bag for that reason. Or if uh, you want to travel with it, go totally. on a plane, carry it on. Yeah, it's an nice, excellent yeah, nice carry-on duffel. size yeah. bag, yeah. too. It's yeah. a good duffel. I know uh, Lolly stole one, and she that's what she used it for. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, um, I've got a great text here. We have phones are packed, and uh, we're going to get to as many people as, as possible. And, and the texts are flooded. You're a popular guy. Yeah, right? you this are, Great dude. show. Wayne, what's the status of our current MPAs, and is there any talk of reopening previously closed areas? And that's from Jeff and Mission BA. Good call, Jeff. Great call, Jeff. So what's happening on the MPA is we're waiting for the decadal review uh, results to come out. They're supposed to be out next month. They probably will be a little bit late knowing how those things go. And we'll get the report. If you listen to all of the uh, word out there from certain communities, they're awesome, right? But we're already putting out our press too. The MPAs are closed to everybody, right? And so what happened? It's about biodiversity, habitat, and everything else, but you can't do it. They're expecting Mother Nature to take care of herself, but Mother Nature is cruel. Look what happened with the warm water blob. It killed off the kelp. It killed off the sea urchin, um, the um, abalone, and the starfish in the central coast. True. They couldn't go in and do culling of those urchins, so they got mad. Well, they were held to their same rules that they put on us. So is that really what we want to do? Right. Right? Right here down in San Diego, we got the Tijuana MPA right on the border with the sewage spills. Right. We're polluting that thing every month with ga- we're, we're gallon, not polluting Well, it. it's being yeah. polluted. Yeah. But what are they doing to fix that? Nothing. So they protected an area for biodiversity, habitat, and all that, but they're not doing anything to fix the problems. Yeah. Well, if you look along our coastline, look at how much biosphere uh, problems that we're having, the luminescence, the bi- bacteria growth, the domain, uh, domoic acid issues. That's from runoff, yes. mainly, right? But what are they doing to fix that to protect those areas? If they're right. really, truly trying to protect, then that's what we need to fix. And we're all for that. We want that fixed, too. So that's why we're fighting so hard. Don't take more space until you fix what you already have. Right. right. You know? Yeah. yeah just and, blindly tanking bigger chunks doesn't solve any problems. The, the, correct. And, and, and here's the thing. One of my pet peeves is that to a, the Tijuana sewage outfall. Because that affects so much beyond what we're recognizing. I, 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 I think that they can prove that a lot of the problems at the Coronado Islands with the, the lack of kelp there and such like that is coming from that. Mm-hmm. A lot of the that it's surrounding areas is coming from that. Look, you got some of the most expensive beachfront in the world in Coronado. Think about swimming in that water next to that sewage. I mean, why don't they can fix it. They just don't. And and the thing that drives me, I, I'm with you. I'm totally with you on that. And the the one you look at all the history books and logs and talk to old, the Coronado Islands had a squid and sea bass fishery very similar to all the islands to the north, the and Catalinas lush and Clemenes. Yeah, very exactly. Luscious kelp beds, squid population, sea bass, and that just basically doesn't exist anymore. Right. Not to say that there's not some squid there sometimes, but it is not like it was. Yeah, and guess which way that sewage goes? It goes right straight out there to the south. Yeah, southwest. Yeah, yeah so, so. There, there's a lot of things going on. We're getting ready for the decadal review. Then we're going to have to talk it out. And that's a precursor. The MPA decadal review is the precursor to the MBA discussions, which is the precursor to the 30 by 30 discussion. Yeah. Right? So we're waiting, and we're going to have to go through this process. But like you say, it's like... The envir- extreme environmentalists need to pay attention to other things that are more important. We are the enemy. Plenty more. We yeah. have been asking for years, what part of fishing? Show us where we're so harmful to the resources, yes. detrimental to the resources, that we can be actively pointed at. Because that's what you guys keep doing is pointing at right. us. They have never been able to come up with a, a single uh, example. But yet... What, they want to close more fishing area for fishing for biodiversity, but we're not the enemy. Yeah, it's what's so infuriating. They just don't want you to fish, and they're going to use any any little thing. This jab, that jab. Maybe I can go over here. Maybe I can get a foot in this way. Maybe I can get a finger yeah. behind the door that way. Whatever it is, that's the route that they try to go. But and, they'll also be the first ones in the door at a sushi bar too. One hundred percent. Yes. Right. Yeah, as long yes. as it came from overseas, it's fine. Yeah, right. Wild. Well, let's jump into the phone. You got that, dude. How about this time we talk to Ben? Ben's calling us from Carlsbad this morning. Hi, Ben. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning, guys. It's a great show. Wayne, you're just doing an amazing job. Um, Rock Cod, Rick, buddy, I am so far behind. I'm so behind you. I, I, <clears throat> I didn't even know. But anyway, how about preempt everything with a cage and an electric reel on every boat? 
For one, how about in the MLPA zones, we plant some kelp and uh, seed some wolf eels to protect them. And uh, what do you think about that? And the other one is, are uh, coppers, are they chuckleheads? And that's my questions. And, and, and just uh, need Start, some starting help, man. The, we got to yeah, keep yes, this Yes, coppers are chuckleheads. Uh, you know, what we all, what we so commonly so, refer to as a chucklehead is a copper rockfish. And, and I'm sure just like you, that's why everybody gets so frustrated. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean those things are in danger? <laughs> yeah, and they're down. The limit is down to one now. Is one. that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And as far as what you're talking about, the problem with the MPA is the way that they wrote the, the legislation is they, nobody can go in and touch anything. They have to, you have to leave it alone. Um, and then, like we said, with the, the culling of the urchin, the purple urchin that had the problem, what I said was, if you guys wanted to, to do it, the adaptive management process should have been that when the water cooled back down, that we could go plant the kelp and go plant the abalone and the starfish back to kick back the, the urchin problem. But we can't touch it. They can't touch it. That's why adaptive management and, and management of the area is more important than just leaving it up to Mother Nature, which is what they wanted to do. I think we already proved that. So how do we now move forward? I absolutely agree with the uh, uh, planting it back and, and you know, I, I call it brood stocking, like what we do. If I built a reef, I would brood stock it, right? I would set it and get the plant the kelp and then put stock on there and help Mother Nature get there faster. And then the last thing, uh, do I think everybody should have an electric reel as a tackle store person? Yes, I do. Yes. I think every person should have one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we, we, we use that because our kite reel doesn't get used in the yeah. off season, and it does make life really it's easy. It's a great idea. It, 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 it works killer, but it's so not necessary either. Before before we yeah. realized that we had that just laying in the closet, you know, in the off season, we just use something heavy, you know, use a 4-0 or use some kind of thing that you don't use anymore. We, we always have a rockfish descender just tied up and ready to go like yeah. it's not an afterthought like before we make the first drop we've got one tied up um and uh you know it's easier now with all this deep drop stuff like heavy weights have become so readily available so yeah. like you said pete even if you have a big one I mean, you can catch a big cow cod you know you drop a five pound weight on you're, you're gonna you know you're gonna sink that thing out no problem yeah there you go all right. Hey, um, thanks a lot for the call this morning. I had another great text come through if we'd like to read this one. It's, good morning, gentlemen. Question for Wayne. Um, are there any specific fish that you have to call in to self-report yourself to let you know that you are cotting and intending to releasing? I'm thinking of protected species like great whites and black sea bass. Um, and uh, also, I also feel that's why there's so many seals that are supposedly in danger. But that's my question, Jason and OB. Do I need to self-report something that is uh, – it, that is protected and i did not intend to hook i don't know of any reg that says you have to self-report on a on a protected species you just have to release yeah you know um especially whitefish right or a white shark um as a federally protected species yeah you don't have to you don't have to I know of. you just yeah. got to do what you're supposed to do get the fish release them the best you can as unharmed as possible and away you go correct yeah another great text here from arnold and uh uh, thank you for that, Arnold. I received a survey in the mail from NOAA to complete, and I'm just wondering if anyone else has received that same survey and if this survey can help us and CCA, or is it a way for them to undermine us? I have no idea what that survey is. That. I haven't seen it. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I know I get surveys from Alaska Department of Fish and Game uh, mm -hmm. a lot, you know, because I have bought an Alaska fishing license. And um, that's, I mean, I think that they... Are our surveys helpful? Can That's be. A, can they be. can be, yeah. but they cannot. Can also be detrimental. Yeah, too. I would. So I would request know. that. I, I, I would request that you that email thing. that to me at wcoto at ccacalifornia.org. Okay. Yeah. Email. I want to see it. I, yeah. I don't know what survey. Yeah, I haven't is. seen one of those. And, either, I, and no if I look survey? at it, I could probably reply. So what's well, the email again? Wcoto k o t o w at k o t o w w k o t o w at cca california. Dot org. Now, is that information on the ccacalifornia.org website? Yeah, my, okay. my, my contact info. Is yeah. Everywhere. So th that's another important portal for you is ccacalifornia.org. You can donate there. You can find out what CCA is up to. You can get in touch with the Wayne and Chris. Uh, memberships. Yeah, if Wayne. you guys have those kind of things that come up, I mean, the, the best part about what we do, we're grassroots. We can't be everywhere. We don't see everything. We want you guys to communicate yeah. with us and tell us what you're seeing. If something comes up, you have a question, please text us, message us, email us, call us. I mean, my phone number's out there. It's 858-232-5721. 
it's out there. Yeah. I will take it. I will answer it if I can. I if I can't, I will research no, he's, it. He, 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 he works 724. Your wife, yes. Your wife would just love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you, though, Pete. I mean, the, I, I get that question a ton in the tackle store. And there is a large segment of people that just feel like, man, every bit of info we get seems to go against us. I don't want to I don't want to report. I don't want to I don't want to share my information. And I understand. And, and I understand it, too. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but boy, you, you can't you can't say that you don't understand the guy's position. He feels like everything that he gives ends up going against him. I will make this plea out to the anglers, though. The Department of Fish and Wildlife Service samplers, the ones that are at the dock, the ones that come to the pier, the ones that take the survey of what you caught, we need you to participate. I was with you on that one. That that was used against us at one point in time. But if we do not participate, then you cannot uh, argue right. why the numbers aren't there for us to yeah, use. Sure. They have to take that sampling and extrapolate it out to the whole population. Right. So if they don't have the numbers, we get hurt. Yeah. We need you to report that catch. Uh, the, the sport boats all do electronic reporting, so that part of us is helping. But the private boat fleet, the, the pier, the surf, so the person Orlando's, you see at the launch ramp, Department yeah. of Fish and Wildlife right. sampler. They're not a they're not a warden. They're just a sampler. Correct. And, and, and so do participate in Please. that. Please, we yeah. need that data. Okay. Um, you know, I the, the rumor has come up that they're saying, well, why don't we go to 100 percent reporting on from the fishermen? Because we suck at it. <laughs> We wouldn't do it. Yeah. We don't turn in, you know, yeah. paperwork. We have a hard time turning in our, our lobster report yeah. cards. Yeah. So I don't want to go there, Man, but, but I need the data. Now, my, my, uh, the thing that I'm looking at is if we go to this electronic application for licensing, is there a way for us to do reporting, self-reporting within that app when it comes out? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Later. The more participation we get, accurate reporting. It's got to be accurate. Because if you just say, oh, it's rockfish, then this is that problem that we have with vermilion or copper. Right, right. Because then you're I grouping caught, them. you got to say specifically, specifically what you the caught. species. Yeah, like I caught it's a important. A bunch of boccaccio that I released, and I right, caught a right. bunch of coppers that I released, and Correct. then I caught one vermilion for real, right? That's. <laughs> but they're doing size data and stuff, so that tells you what the recruitment is, which helps us with the data. So it says the, the population's healthy. It's not older, but it, we got recruitment going out. I got a bunch of babies. I re, you tell them I re released so many fish that right. were underside you know uh, yeah. it's important because that data needs to be captured all right all right hey, with that said it's time to find out uh what's going on what's biting with our fishdope.com report and a guy who always loves playing by the rules he loves new regulations he never takes small fish he's a guy that releases just about everything and that's our buddy captain dave hansen your saltwater guy today that catch report sponsored by the fish pros and fish processing in san diego Go your fish. best processors <laughs> for your fish when your trip returns uh yeah also with fish pros the market you can purchase fresh fish they have smoked and jerky fish their spices rubs smoked cheese the tuna burger the poke kit it's all available at their old town location on taylor street or order online at fishermansprocessing.com and be sure to make your reservations by texting them at 619-255-3128 you make a you make a res reservation on the american angler Lori gets you onto a mm -hmm. trip from 2023 you text the next text That's should be to fisherman's processing the other thing i don't want to mention about fisherman's Processing, we talked about it yesterday great holiday fair with thanksgiving coming up man go get some of their smoked cheese or smoked fish and make and be the superstar totally with do. the ultimate hors d'oeuvres at your holiday party that's my play yeah that's my play and you can do it and even if you're in la or orange county we have a lot of listeners up in ventura santa barbara moro bay yeah. uh go online they'll ship it right to you you gotta you Open up the ziploc. You open up the backpack bag. You cut it into cubes. You put it on the board, and you're the hero. It's yeah, like it's the like, it's wow, the easiest the thing. Yeah, I've ever had. pretty yeah, killer for sure. Good morning, Captain Dave. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Oh, it's, it's... well. Good morning. Good morning. I about wet my pants. Yes, yes. I am known as Mr. Conservation. Yes, right. I am. Absolutely. Thanks, Rick, for pointing that out. A lot of people don't remember that. That's right, buddy. I, I am Mr. Conservation. Wayne, happy day after our week after your birthday, buddy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, happy happy birthday. We're just we're just pulling a little striped marlin on the boat right now to release. We're just getting some pictures of it. We've had a phenomenal morning. We got eight rooster fish and we just put a nice marlin on the boat. But um gang, the fishing up in Southern California right now, it took a little break, but it is back full speed. I talked to Don Brockman last night for an hour or so. Squid everywhere. He said that the squid's pretty much all over the place. It should be showing up down there in your neck of the woods here in the next couple of days, Pete and Rick. There's squid all over the coast, up and down the coast. Very, very good squid fishing. 
for a week up off of Isers. And then at Catalina, front side, back side, there's squid. There's just so much squid, Brockman said. It's historic amount of squid showing up here right now. Bunch of squid at Clemente. It's only going to do well for us for sea bass and yellowtail fishing. A couple of our clients were fishing at La Jolla yesterday, had a nice go-round on the yellows there. They didn't land any. They were all way too big for our guys, but they had fun fishing there. They let four of them go with the long release. And then uh, Catalina's on fire. Bonita fishing is really, I mean, it's insane what's going on right now as far as fishing goes. The Bonita fish is like as good as it was all summer long. It's very, very good Bonita fishing with fish anywhere from two pounds to six pounds from the front side of the island, from the canned up all the way up to the isthmus. That bluefin is still trying to bite. It's all weather related. The when the weather's nice, the fishing's really good. When the weather's not nice, the fishing's a little slow. But it's all weather related, and that stuff at Clemente and all the way out to the Tanner and the Cortez. And then, like uh, Wooly was saying, Marcus on the uh, Fury had a little go round on the yellowfin tuna. Hard to believe, but yeah, the dolphin school was holding yellowfin two miles off of the uh, island a couple days ago. There's just so much to do, and then the rockfish fishing is absolutely insane right now. So there's no reason to not go fishing. Yeah, You're for right sure. That, Dave. Fishdope.com is your source. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code hookup now. Lowercase, no space. Hookup now is your $20 code. And Dave, how do we find you? Well, you love what we're doing right now, Pete, or Rick, and Wayne. We're trying to get this marlin re- revived to throw them, to th- let him swim. Oh, there he goes. Frank's pushing him around in the water, swimming. There he goes. He's swimming away. That's going to be a great video. No one will ever believe that we did that. We have actually <laughs> let a fish Captain go. Captain Dave released something. How about <laughs> it? Huh? Absolutely. You guys check me out at YourSaltWaterGuide.com on all social media and then my website, YourSaltWaterGuide.com. You'll never have to follow a boat again. You can go find your own fish. Check it all out. Happy holidays. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Thanks for letting me be part of the show. And, Rick, thanks for letting everyone know I'm such a conservationist. You know, I got and, you back, buddy. And on the spot, he yeah. releases a marlin. Yeah. So further proof, right? Yeah. Who, who, right there. Who lets him go on air? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Dave. He's, he's Dave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, you're a saltwater guy. Wants to keep fish out of those white bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, we got an empty white bag right here on the bow. It's kind of bugging me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, good luck, buddy. Appreciate the report. Great job, as always. All right, guys, talk to you next Sunday. Bye. Bye, Wayne. Bye, Dave. Hey, we want to remind you, focus your offshore fishing in the best areas by using Terrafin charts, temperature, chlorophyll, and more. Terrafin is the professional's choice for dependability and for accuracy. And now with Terrafin Mobile, you can download the latest water charts to your iPad, your iPhone, or your Android device. Check Terrafin.com for more information. It is still the professional's choice, man. There's no Dude, doubt about you got to have Terrafin. Especially on your iPad or your iPhone or your phone or whatever. Having Terrafin is so awesome because you can browse the charts, save the charts, and then compare, especially this time of the year, how the water moves. Like you watch that water out in Clemente where they're catching all those bluefin. been keeping an eye on that. And you can just watch every day how the water moves yeah. and this time of the year you get some pretty clean shots or watch where it went you know i mean if it you went. have a, you know if this is this is the area that was holding that fish and you watch that all that water was here and then it slides up the beach three yeah. or four miles like you know to slide with it like oh, that fish is yeah. in that piece of water oh for sure yeah definitely well i have, I have a great text here from uh and this is from uh chris in san diego and he says good morning guys great show and thanks to wayne for cca and all you do what is the best site to go to for full list of rules regulation with current closing and situations it's a good good yeah, well good, very now that they're not or does it exist now yeah. that they're not publishing or printing a reg book you have to go to the department of fish and wildlife to look it up the one app that i find is very useful is fish legal Oh, okay. there's an app. You can download it. You leave your GPS on and it'll tell you what's available right there. And it has been very, very accurate. Fish legal. So that'll give you actually where you are in relationship to the MPAs. And Absolutely. Everything. It'll tell you that you're inside an MPA, what's closed. It tells you based on what your GPS is selling you, you're at. Mm-hmm. That's the only app that I know of that is that complete. Uh, otherwise, you got to go to the Department of Fish and Wildlife reg book. Wow. Just download it. And leave it, it on your phone. And it's no longer print, printed versions of printing. the reg books is not a thing anymore. Yep. Okay. That's a bummer. Oh, it's bad. I, I, I question that one when they did it because how many people don't have their computers, don't have a smartphone? Yeah. And how do you look it up while you're out in the water if you don't have a signal? Yeah. Like I said, I, I always... Didn't, I didn't know that was the thing either. I, I download it onto my phone, but it's even at that, trying to look things up while you're on the water, it's really hard. 
you know. And yeah, it's it's tough. Nice. I mean, especially with all the different types of closures that we have. So the app is called Fish Legal. Yeah, it's yeah, an app. And I like it's a that. Free app, right? It is. It actually, it's a good app. Yeah. That's cool for sure. All right. All right. Hey, I had a great text come through. This is a uh, morning, guys. This is Bill from Mission Viejo. My question is, how could a new up and coming science student help in marine sciences or assist in working with CCA? Wow. Um, if you're up and coming, work with programs like uh, some of the tagging studies that we're trying to do. We're doing stuff with the universities on the CCFRP program, which is tagging inside and outside the MPAs. Um, we're doing tagging of bluefin. We are doing the hatchery program with Hub SeaWorld Research Institute. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they're back open for internship, but they used to be. That was one of my thoughts here. I remember yeah. that was always a thing, at least at, at, at one point, you know, pre-COVID times and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it, we're coming out of the COVID times, so things are opening back up. We can always use volunteers on those kinds of things. When we're doing our broodstock collection program, when we're doing releases, uh, working at the grow out facilities, um, all of it's all volunteers, so we can use the help. I would say, as a student, I know there's a lot of things where you know they're requ- required to put in X amount of volunteer hours. Is CCA an outlet where somebody can do something like that if they're a they're you know an, an up and coming you know student and they need that kind of stuff and they're a proactive fisherman and they want to help and there's there's volunteer abilities for CCA. There is volunteer abilities. Uh, we've taken uh, non paid internships and you have to pull out the paperwork normally with sure. the program, but we can sign off on that kind of stuff. If you want to volunteer for CCA, which is a voluntary organization, that's how we exist. How does one become a volunteer? Good question. Uh, Contact us. Either contact me or contact Chris Rechidera, our assistant director. Yeah. Uh, Both of our emails are out there. Um, CCACalifornia.org. Just uh, go up to our website. Go to a Facebook. Message us because we take all those. Okay. Uh, Instagram, we take messages there too. Really? And you talked about it at the beginning of the show too. CCA is more than just the the body that takes care of us, you know, and, and fights our fights, but also, you know, your fundraising efforts are their community parties. They're fun. They're they're fundraisers and they're get togethers and they're you know, get you uh you know, hooked up with other like minded people that, you know, have an outdoor barbecue or, you know, or at a brewery or or at a golf tournament or whatever it may be. Like you also put on very fun events that are all about having a good time and the end result is just adding money to the chest that helps us keep everything open. We we're we're individuals like you guys and we want to have fun. I mean if all we're gonna do is is sit there and talk about advocacy. It's dry. I'm sorry. It's nothing you can do about that. But we're fishermen. We like to party. We like to go fishing. We like to go have fun no matter what. Very diverse, right? We did country western dance up in Santa Barbara. We did a brew fest out in uh, down here in San Diego. We did another Oktoberfest out in Ontario. The brew fest here. I went to that. Go- was fun. The golf tournament up in Orange County. Golf we tournament was just, fantastic. That's we're huge, trying huh? all different kinds of things. Yeah. We split the L.A. chapter into a north and a south. Uh, next year, they're going to do their event at Evike, and they're going to do this like fishing contest. So there's groups of people getting together, and it's going to be bragging rights about can you cast, can you do this, can you do that, and there's going to be teams. And it's going to we're trying to fund fun, right? That's yeah, that's rad. our whole thing. The, have fun. Have fun and and do Help the right raise thing money. for, right. for, for uh, raise money and and do the right thing for fishermen. Bart Hall's on the line. Good morning, Bart. Hey, Bart. Good morning, Pete and Rick and Wayne. How are you? Great. Morning. Well, I'm just chiming in to, you know, support Wayne and say what a wonderful job he's doing. But as I've been listening this morning, there's a lot of questions that have to do with the Department of Fish and Game. And, uh, Wayne, um, I haven't had a chance to tell you this, but at both the shows, the department is coming back strong, just like they were before in 2020. And uh, we're hoping to get you to uh, agree to be the moderator of the panels that we're going to do with them again. So any questions that we we want to have the uh, – for the Department of Fish and Wildlife here in California, there's nothing going on. Though. And the thing is, because of Delmar being February 16th, 19th, uh, that, that law is going to go, you know, just before that. And so there will also be uh, dealing with those licenses at both shows. So anyway, I had not had a chance to tell you that yet, so I'm telling you now. No problem. I'm, I'm all up for the MC of that stage. The, he I is think the ultimate very... MC. No doubt. Yeah, for sure. Hey, and thanks, we're try, we're trying to We're trying to raise money there, too. I've got to, that's, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff we're putting together. There's going to be lots of people, and we're going to raise lots of money for CCA. We need everyone to participate in that. For Looking sure. forward to it. Well yeah. said. Thanks, Bart. Appreciate the call. Hey, when we come back, we've got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls, more catch reports, and a whole lot more. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app. Hi, I'm Bart Hall, and I'm here to announce the return of the Hall family shows to Southern California. 2023 
will see the first Hall family show in San Diego in four years, the first Hall family show in California in three years, and the first outdoor recreation show in Southern California in 2023. It will be the Bard Hall Show, February 16th to 19th at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, and it's going to be spectacular. Then we move to the Bard Hall Show, March 29th to April 2nd at the Long Beach Convention Center. Since 1946, millions of happy family memories have been made at this show, and more will be made this year. We thank Turner's Outdoorsman for sponsoring our 75th anniversary celebration. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Bart Hall Shows, presented by Progressive. And remember, it's a whale of a show. On your next fishing trip, you want to maximize your catching power by using the best jigs available. That's why you need Sea Falcon. These handmade Japan brand certified lures will take your fishing and catching to the next level. All Sea Falcon jigs and plugs are hand painted in Japan, utilizing the highest level of quality and attention to detail. Gamakatsu's premium assist hooks are ideal to pair with Sea Falcon lures. For knife jigs, short jigs, poppers, and plugs, Sea Falcon lures get it done. Check SeaFalconUSA.com. Hey, it's time to talk about a place where it's always biting, and that's Point Loma Seafoods right next to the San Diego landings in Point Loma. I was in there the other day, and their array of fresh fish, everything from fresh bluefin tuna to black sea bass. Oh, why do they get black sea bass? It comes from Mexico, and it's legal to catch and bring in commercially. Yeah. But if you want to try black Such sea treat. bass? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Point Loma Seafoods is your spot. The other thing that you got to always talk about is that cooked case that they have. Their smoked oh, yeah. fish, all of the... The shrimp that's available, they'll often have, sometimes they'll do that, like Cajun spice shrimp in the cook case, oh, yeah. uh, bulk Dungeness crab, lobster, oh, right. it's so good. So, I love that place. Looking for stuff to take home, the place to go is Point Loma Seafoods, it, it, from clams, oysters, to fresh fish, uh, lobsters, cr- clam. Uh, Anything Here, you can think of. Let me throw another one at you. We've been talking about holiday parties. You want to talk about being an oh, all-star? Put in an order for a, a sandwich platter, a smoked fish platter, whatever they do right. at all, too. You can do it ahead of time. Slide in, pick up the whatever catering platter you want, show up to your party again. All-star. Yeah. Call them up, order it up, and just pick it up, and you'd be an all-star. Yep. Point Loma Seafoods right next to the San Diego landings in Point Loma. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Again, been a very busy morning. Still plenty of time to get you through. If you want to join us, give us a call at 213-432-1090 or send us a text via that Let's Talk Hookup app. It has been a very busy morning. That's your chance to get through. Again, want to remind you, you've got to uh, send your text questions in with your contact info because if you win that killer prize, $300 gift certificate to Costa Del Mar, we want to make sure to be able to get a hold of you. Hey, let's jump back into the phone. This time we're going to talk to Ralph. Ralph's calling us from Menifee this morning. Good morning, Ralph. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Hey, good morning, boys. Pete, Rick, Wayne. Wayne, thank you for everything you do. Uh, you know, all of us fishermen out here can't, can't express it enough. Um, I'm super passionate about this rockfish thing. Other than me, you know, re-upping my membership and buying the calendar and, you know, throwing money at the problem, what else can I do, like, right now as an angler of rockfish to to, to help out uh, CCA in any way? Great question. For all of us right now, stay the course on what we're trying to do on the releases of the coppers and the quillbacks uh, and the sheep's head for for the local species. We need that because if we keep the numbers down, it shows that we can actively participate in our future. It will only help with our 
uh, cause as we keep off of those numbers. We do the releases. Make sure you're using descending devices. Um, if you're on the boats that are doing the survey work, then they want you to uh, uh, donate your fish. Please do that. Help with the surf sampling. Those are all active things that we can do right now. For sure. Hey, good question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. I got a great text here from Tim and Carlsbad, and he says, Good morning. Can you tell me what electric meal models and rods for deep drop rock fishing? I'm a veteran with a shoulder disability and need that help. That's uh, a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. There are several out there. I mean, the, the one that we are using for our descending is the Shimano Beastmaster, uh, but it's because that is what is our kite reel, and that's larger than necessary, but a fantastic reel. Um, so... You know, and you could also use that as a deep drop swordfish. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you also might consider looking at the Force Master, right. which is a slightly lesser expensive version of the same thing. Uh, still great for your kite. Still great for your rock fishing. Then the only problem is it doesn't quite have the guts that the Beastmaster does uh, for using for, for your for your for your swordfish too. Yeah. There are there. Uh, so yeah, as far as what's available, Shimano America. That that that's it. And uh, there's a couple other lesser brands we've talked to before about the Daiwa Tanacoms and yeah. stuff like that. Those are less expensive. And for what I think he's talking about, that might be the right way to go. Only because the Beastmaster is not available in, which is a bummer. It's not available in the size. It's really conducive to being your rod and reel to fish right. with. Um, in Shimano America, the Shimano Japan has Beastmasters yes. down into smaller sizes They're that are really like cool. th th it would be perfect for what you're talking about, being a, a veteran and or just somebody that needs a little extra hand. Um, but uh, there is a Daiwa version in the Tanacom down to a 500 that is you know that, that Mark it, Mills was talking about it, during Tackle Day. You yeah. got it yeah. exactly. Yeah, so and, that and might, that's available. That's an electric reel that's a, that is available it's in, much in smaller. This market. Yeah. And I mean it's just it's just like anything you know Talica, It's a Talica 10 instead of a Talica 25. Right. You know? No, just a small and you can get a bat battery pack that's along. You don't need to fit in. You can yeah. It's interesting, too. None of the real manufacturers really are in the free market anymore. And I think it's just kind of a safety thing. You know, mm -hmm. lithium batteries and salt water aren't the safest things together. And the real manufacturers don't want their names on batteries anymore. All of the reels come with a plug with alligator clips that can easily be clipped to a, you know, a, a small, you know, lawnmower type battery is going to run your electric reel all day long. No issues. Or you can fit it to a plug where it runs off the 12 volt on your boat. Or you can just go to a different company um, and get a battery that plugs right into the road. That's the most slick way to do it. Yeah. You can find them through the aftermarket very easily. All right. Very good. Good question. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and jump back on the phone. That sounds good to me. How about this time we talked to Mo? He's called us from Vista this morning. What up, Mo? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, uh, Wayne. Uh, when we go to L.A. Bay and we bring our fish back in the coolers, do everybody need to fill out a declaration there? Technically, yes. Everything you bring in from outside to California, you're supposed to fill out a declaration of importation. Bring it. Yeah. It's called well, a declaration of importation. How about when we're flying from Cedros? Yeah, how about when we fly back Everybody's supposed to be filling Cedros? out a declaration of importation. Yeah, that, I mean, that's oh, what the rule okay. is. Yeah, the, the law is when you bring fish from Mexico to the U.S., you're supposed to have that. Period. I mean, that's what the law is. The reality is a lot of us don't don't follow it to the letter of the law when when it's fish that wouldn't be a problem one way or the other like you know it's rockfish is the the one that always comes to mind when you cannot take rockfish at home it's it becomes the most important to declare it for mexico but like like wayne's saying hey the rule is the rule and the rule is when you're bringing fish from mexico you're supposed to declare it via that form and turn that form in within 24 hours pretty rarely is it regulated especially when it's a fish that doesn't need to be you know covered from one country or the other but that doesn't mean that it's not the law the when you're crossing the border from cedros the uh Immigration and customs on the U.S. side is not going to ask you for your fishing license, and they're not going to ask you for the declaration of of, of, of entry. I don't think. Yeah, they, they haven't so far. They haven't. That, but, that's not. That's, that's not, not what they're looking. That's for. That's not what they're looking for. Right. So, from that standpoint, though you're supposed to do that's it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're probably. It okay. does. It doesn't mean that it's not still the law. It's just yeah. it, no. Nobody's looking it, exactly. at it. And and I will be the first to admit too. Like there's been a plenty of trips that I've yeah come home from fishing in Mexican waters where I haven't filled out the declaration. But that doesn't mean that that I wasn't supposed to. You but know, I mean, it only takes one. Yeah, yeah. totally. You're right. And you're what, you're dead right about that. What's the penalty on that? Do you know? Depends. It yeah. just depends on. What I mean, you bring what it they? Back. Yeah. They'll, so, they, sure. they'll take your fish. They will. And they'll take. They'll give you a ticket. They'll give you a ticket. Okay. All right. Just fill it out. 
It's yeah, easy. And, and again, it's a piece each, of paper. Each passenger on the boat. You have four passengers. You need four declarations. Just have them printed, read them readily yeah. done on the boat. You fill it out when before you go out, out. Put out your counts and you know yep. your fish on the way back. It's not hard. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely not hard. Yeah, I, I, especially with the new regulations of, of rockfish coming in starting January. Now, if you're fishing this time of the year and you're kind of going both sides, yeah. You could probably say, hey, oh, I caught these. Unless you have more coppers or unless we could have more vermilions or whatever. But um, starting when the, there's a closure, oh, you, yeah. you're going to bet that they're going to watch that. Yeah, when when it's rockfish closure time, I do it religiously. Yeah. I'm not as good as I should be about doing it at other times. You know, if I've been down yellowtail fishing something, again, but that the law is the yeah. law is the law. So you decide how closely you need to follow it. Yeah, good question, though. Thanks totally. a lot for the call this morning. Harry in La Jolla texts another good question. Is there an issue with the ban restriction of lead weights still in effect? Oh, that's a good question. The, the lead ban uh, issue is with the Department of Toxic Substance Control. Uh, it's fishing weights and, and tackle. Um, that one, we're like priority number 19, and they're still working on number one. And this is going back. 2013 when the list was developed so we're on the list but it's a slow process and my thing is i keep trying to throw other people under the bus along the way of other issues that are more important than lead weight and fishing tackle um that are going to be a bigger issue to the general public and the environment okay yeah so that's kind of a back burner thing right now right now in the ocean in lakes it's a different story right depending on where you go yes Depends on where you, you know go. they're trying to get rid of lead everywhere so, I, I mean, at some point, we're just going to probably just transition out over time. Yeah. As, as a tackle store, do you guys still sell lead weights? We do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. all of our... So it's still legal. All of our lead weights have to... You know, the, the cost of lead has gone through the roof because of all of these types of policies. So, every piece of lead that we sell has to be individually um, bagged, and it has to have a Prop 65 lead warning label attached to it. And, I mean, you think about all the regulations that the manufacturers have to go through to produce it still legally. It just, we still definitely do sell it. It is still legal for us to sell. It's still legal for you to use. But the amount of warnings and cleanliness to do it have just, unfortunately, made the cost go Costs. up considerably. Like double? Uh, for, for, oh, over a few years, for sure. Yeah. I mean, more than that, really. Yeah. Like, like I, how much is a 16-ounce sinker now? Do you know? Any idea? Between five and seven bucks, depending Holy on what God. you know. I mean, it's, 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 it's what it is. You know, yeah. depending on how much bulk somebody buys sure. their lead in and, and how closely they follow the lead law. You know, right. we're, we're kind of high profile, so our stuff is very legit. You know, every single sinker we have is in a bag. It's got a warning label to others. You know, maybe you find somebody that's still got some bulk lead and getting a deal, you can get it for a little bit cheaper. But yeah, it's it's expensive. As yeah. a retailer, you do not want to get caught. We on can't that take 65. the risk. Yeah, yeah, we can't take the risk. I mean, there's yeah. some people that do, and man, if you can score a good deal, great. But yeah, you, oh, so if you buy it like from a third party that's pouring their own or something like that. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure you can yet. find it lesser expensive if you do the search. But yeah, to do it right, that's what it costs. Yeah. All right crazy hey another great text came through uh always hesitate reading things like this but it, it, it does bring up a good point and it's about seals uh wayne is it legal for sea world to take seals uh from the mlpa almost every seal in la jolla seems to have been rescued at one point in its life and tagged from sea world and nursed back to health uh which makes the colony of seals artificial and is i in my opinion is helping to feed the great whites great whites give birth to two to 14 pups every two years and without gill nets we're seeing a much higher survival rate on those the seals give birth to at least one pup every two years and that population seems out of control. Uh, can we help stop SeaWorld from helping to inflate the artificial numbers in, uh, within the MLPAs? They're allowed to do the rescues when called in. Um, they, yes, they, they're allowed to do that. And that issue of protection of the Mammal Protection Act and everything is very convoluted, and it's a tough conversation to have. It gets federal. Very tough. Yeah, and it's right. very we, high up we, its food chain. We believe in management, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough conversation. I look at it as we love our dogs and our cats, but yet we manage them. We spade and neuter, right? right. Uh, for the right reason. Having that conversation about sea lions and seals is a tough conversation, but it's one that we really need to have. Mm -hmm. We need to manage these species. Um, and it, it's hard for everybody. Sure. It's just not an easy answer because it's very hard to get legislation passed and changes. Yeah. at that level and here's the other thing you, you bring up uh, i mean i hate to bring in i know i, I hesitate and cat reading thing it, and stuff but like it's, that it's a good but, but, but 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 you compare that there are problem animals that become a detriment to society 
and they are um, removed. They're removed. Yeah. Why can't we do that with sea lions? Because, because there are protected. problem because there are problem sea lions that cause repeated infractions and and actually injure people. If there is that where it's harm to a person or people, you can call the Department of Fish and Wildlife Wardens in, uh -huh. right? And they, they can build a case, and they have moved just like they do with bears or Move coyotes or whatever. They, they'll, re, they'll reposition them, right? But <laughs> what good does that do? They'll come. Well, up yeah, we have a yeah. we have an instance up in Oregon where they the, those guys up there had it, and the the sea lion was four hundred miles inland, right? Right. And they moved him back to the ocean, and he was back in a week, right? So eating in, <laughs> eating endangered uh, uh, salmon, salmon, steel salmon, salmon and steelhead, steel steel yeah. and, and and eliminating an, a whole species yeah. from the yeah. earth. It, yeah. It's a tough conversation. It's, we're it's we're trying. I, sure, I've yeah. already had conversations with the feds back in Washington. I, I, yeah, I didn't mean to throw a, a, a negative one no, down there, it's but it's, it's, it's good for discussion. No, it's real. And, it's yeah. something that we're all talking and about. It's something that we all deal we with We all as need to find a solution that we can all agree on. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it exists, but we got to have the conversation. We can't shy away from the issues. Totally. Yeah. Back to fundraising about CCA, which is so important. I want to th read this from Rick from Chula Vista. He says, one way they've gotten people to normally that normally wouldn't think of donating to do, uh, to do so is to use the birthday donation on Facebook. The last few years, I've raised several hundred dollars, Captain Rollo's, and this year will be CCA. I thought I would share that with all of you listeners. And, and, and so explain that, the birthday donation. Yeah, so what happens is you can actually set it up on your birthday to say that I want to contribute um, so much money towards a charitable organization. And you just set up a fundraiser. It's almost like a, what's that other donation site that they use? Uh, GoFundMe. Like, uh -huh. It's like a GoFundMe, but it's on Facebook itself. Yeah. And it, it is a great thing. And we appreciate everybody who's done it for us. Um, it is it is easy. It's it's kind of like what we do with the Contribute to Conservation. You know, uh, everybody has their avenue. But if you have a lot of friends on Facebook and you can do that, great. We appreciate it. We can always use the help. All That's right. awesome. Hey, I, I wanted to read another good text. Uh, and this was a great one because we, were, we are talking so much rockfish and so much rockfish from Mexico. It's from John and Mira Mesa. Uh, says, Wayne, if we're allowed to bring Mexican caught rockfish into U.S. waters with our declaration, what about fillets? Is it legal to bring back filleted rockfish? And do we still need to worry about skin patches? You are not allowed to fillet your fish in Mexico and bring it back on your private boat. Uh, that is in the regs. There is no filleting in Mexico waters. Okay, um, but what if if you are coming back, and you uh, cross the line? Obviously, you have to cross the line to get back home. Um, can you fillet once you cross that line and and leave the skin patch? I I personally don't do that because if you have this issue of, then you're going to be stuck with fillet lanes on rockfish, right, in the U.S. side. So if you're close and you nip it a little short, you're going to be held to that regulation, right? Gotcha. So I'm very careful about the, the whole filleting on the water thing. It scares me coming back. You know, technically, yes, I guess you can do it, but is it worth it sometimes? I don't think so. Minimum fillet length is what? It depends on the species, yeah. right? There's the, the minimum 10, 10 inch on the rockfish, right? On the whole length. And then it's uh -huh. the fillet from there. I don't, I don't have that reg memorized on yeah. the California side. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't fillet on the water usually because I don't, I don't want to chance it with a, a nick of a knife being short on a fillet length. Yeah, I, I got no idea. I know that there's minimum fillet lengths on calico bass and things like that. I didn't even know that there was a minimum fillet length on a rockfish. I didn't so, either. I mean, again, there you yeah. go. You know, and yeah. and it, it's, it's tough. It's tough to tough to keep in touch. And this is yeah. what I do for a living. I had no idea that, that was a thing. It's so complicated. And do the wardens really know? That's what I, that's well, my question. Yeah. You, again, look it up on the right. reg books. Go up to the Department of Fish and Wildlife and sure. look under the groundfish regulations. All yeah, right. Well said. Let's turn back on the phone. You got it. How about this time we talk to Hills? Hills is calling us for Ventura this morning. Hi, Hills. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. It's a great show. Um, I really appreciate all the info and everything. Um, uh, I'm a proud CCA member. I was wondering... Um, the boats that I've been fishing on in, in Channel Islands area, you know, um, they all have rock, you know, rockfish release devices, you know, right at hand, right there when you come down the stairs from the galley. And uh, my question is, though, it, um, if there's a bunch of tiny rockfish, a zero, has anybody invented sort of like a, a basket? You could put a, maybe put a bunch of little ones in the hand wall and then put them in a basket and send them down because... Um, seems to be um, something that um, would be efficient and help people to get on board with um, 
descending in them. Yeah, the very first thing that we did before yeah. we had all these fancy releasers was a was a milk crate that we turned upside down and put weights on it, dropped it down with bulk um, rockfish in it, and did the release that way. And they still sell those at yeah. West Marine, right? I'm sure. You, yeah, I mean, and an, e- an easy thing to garage fab up. It, it, it's a great way to release a bunch of small ones. Yeah, I mean, it's it, if you're you just have to deal if you're with- on a sport boat trying to do that to try to turn the thing over and dump it in the water and get it down, it's hard. When you're on a private boat, you're closer to the water usually. Yeah. And you can turn that thing over with the fish in it and get it down. You just have to deal with hand over handing your milk crate and your yeah. you know big ten pound weight back up to the, is the only is the only issue there. But uh, but yeah, it works it works great. It does work. All right, hey great, Gales. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. You know Gary White, uh, Gary from Longdale, the Iron, Man. Iron Man himself <laughs> had a had a point about uh, the people that volunteer for the 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 state board. Uh, the uh, local boards and all the different volunteers. And I just want to throw out again a big thank you to all those people that participate in that. How does that happen? How does, how did, how did, like Robbie Gant? I mean, I went up and shook Robbie's hand. It's like, man, you, and from AFCO, he is a busy guy, has a family and everything, and he finds so much time to help. Now, first, Orange County, now LA County chapter. Yeah, South LA. I mean, yep. there's some people that are real standouts. I am not one of them. I just yeah. talk about it. I don't do a lot. I just talk about CCA and promote it. But there are guys mm-hmm. that really put a lot of their own time and effort into it, like our, Robbie Gant. Our buddy Luke Burson. Luke Burson Absolutely. is another one. Huge. We have so many dedicated volunteers. We are a grassroots organization. We do not exist without all of those volunteers. You cannot thank enough the chapter leadership uh, because they are putting even more time in than the standard volunteers. But then you have all of the peripheral people that come out and help us build the, the banquets events and the, the, the charters that we do. And then all of the all of our anglers out there, all of our members that come out and, and support us. It is grassroots 101, and we cannot do this without you. We do this for you. And you guys help us so we can help you, right? I mean, it's just that, yeah. that circular thing. But it, it, it has to be uh, the angling community really needs to participate. Absolutely. To make this thing work. And, and it is working. I mean, the 365 license is a classic example. The, the, the 30 by 30 victory there. I mean, how, name some of the other Yeah, you guys are doing it. Bluefin tuna. Bluefin tuna. Uh, yeah. our I mean, they bait, wanted to our, take bluefin tuna away from us. Live yeah. bait fishery. Yeah. The live bait. Oh, yeah. Anchovies yeah. and sardines. Yeah, they wanted to stop live bait. They it's going to still, it's gonna come back. They're going to yeah. keep oh, poking yeah. at us on that one. Yeah. You know, everything that we're doing with the ground fish, everything that we're doing with the bag limits, and it doesn't matter. Sheep's head, we're working on the cow cod to open that back up. Yeah. You know, opening the cow cod conservation areas you name it up and it's, down the coast we're fighting for the mpa it's a barrage you know, oh 30 by 30 is ongoing we, yeah. we had meetings just last week with the crna it's all levels of government all the way down yeah. to the ports right we, we we try to engage at every so level so get involved and even when even when a negative happens like the rockfish thing you guys like okay took that breath and instantly like all right well here we go we're going to work on backside round two like you guys don't ever stop you you already said Hey, they made their decision and said that this amount of time is going to happen. Now let's work on the next one and see if we can get see if we can get some extra species added to it that we do get to fish for. See if we can make the time get pushed back. How do you provide solutions to problems? Right. That's the goal, right? How do you be proactive in our fishery? That's what we're trying to do. I love it. Hey, when we come back, we're going to find out who's got themselves a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. How many have? Low, low, low gas prices, great service, and free ice is what Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena is all about. For your car, or truck, and especially your trailer boat, you need Summit Gasoline. The savings are substantial when you fill up at the Summit, but they don't compromise on service. No way. The great staff is attentive, friendly, and ready to help. When you pull up to the pumps, notice how clean it is, the great sound system, and, of course, the low gas and diesel prices. Walk into the Summit Gasoline. Bistro and check out the selection of frozen bait and chum, the top of the line Italian coffee, and so much more. Now, hear this. Get 100 pounds of ice free with a 35 gallon minimum purchase and stock up on snacks, beer, water, soda, and fishing licenses for your trip. Just when you need low gas prices most, Summit Gasoline at the Sports Arena comes to the rescue. Summit Gasoline. Low prices, friendly staff, free ice, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. 
This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. Spring 8 day, summer 5 day, or a fly down fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Want to take your catch from fresh to superior grade? This is Robbie Gant from AFCO. We developed the tools for the EKGMA process. Circuit Breaker is specially designed to disable the full length of the fish's spinal cord. The memory-resistant wire of AFCO Circuit Breaker will not bend or kink, even after repeated use. Take your fish care to the next level with Circuit Breaker by AFCO. Available at a dealer near you or check out AFCO.com. Like Robbie said, take your fish care to the next level with Circuit Breaker by AFCO. Check AFCO.com or your favorite tackle retailer. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there's only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life here in America's finest city. The Kona Kai Resort Spa Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants. Check ResortKonaKai.com for more information. The Kona Kai Resort, much more than just a place to park your boat. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. All right, it's time for the big coin flip. Wayne's going to do us the honors, find out who's got themselves a brand new coaster. Today, the winner comes from the texter side. Congratulations, a first-time texter, Arnold in San Diego, is the big winner today. Arnold, congratulations. You are going to be stoked with those brand new coasters. Yeah, and you're going to love them. Uh, There's so many great models, and uh, I, I, check out the Jose Pro. Love that one, and you've got the Rinconcito on yep. your head right now. But uh, thanks to Costa. Costa is a huge contributor contributor to conservation right absolutely yeah they across do a the, lot across the country yeah all the people from costa do a lot for cca and uh, we're very grateful for for coastal and what we do our right. coasters yeah for sure wayne we're very grateful for you and yeah, Chris thanks and buddy. all the people that do so much for cca and i just named a few names but there's so many great names how do we become a member of cca how do we do more cca yeah join cc uh, cca california.org like us book follow instagram all right with that appreciate and we'll continue Continue the, the fight and continue to win uh, these battles, but we have to keep going for sure. Hey, thanks to JP for all he does on the board and answering the phones. And thanks to Adam for all he does on the Let's Talk Hookup website. We want to thank you out there, too, for all your texts, your calls, and your support of Let's Talk Hookup. Next Saturday, Eric and Cal from Cal's Custom Reels are going to be here. That's going to be a good show next Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 9. And then next Sunday, Captain Andy Cates yeah. from the Red Rooster 3. How about that? He'll be fresh off the trip on uh, the Red Rooster on Saturday and be right here on Sunday. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next week right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Network.